Okay, so just before we start, one thing we need to do is select these two eye controls and graph it again and make sure we've renamed these as we're going along. So I've renamed these blend colors left eye, head follow, rotate, and head follow, translate. So just renaming them as we go. Okay, so we want the wrist control to follow along with the rest of the body now. So as we rotate this about, you can see the wrist is staying behind and with FK controls, we want to rotate from the base and then move the weight up the chain. So we'd expect the wrist uh, control to be down here, but because this is also used for the IK as well, it, it's been allowed to freely translate about, but we want to be able to get this to follow along with the arm. And also, if we just undo those movements, what we want as well is if we had this control in IK, for the majority of IK we want the IK to move on its own, but there might be occasions where we want the IK to follow along with the body. Now we can see here, rotating this about, the IK staying behind, which for some animations we will want, but we want to give the animator a choice or control over what this control is going to follow. So what we can actually do is set up the follow for the FK and then also use that because if it's following the FK if you think the FK controls are still there they're just hidden so if it's still following the, the FK controls it would still in IK mode still follow so we can just use the same follow control so to get it started what we'll do is hide the mesh so we don't want to use a parent constraint because again we want the ability to blend this on and off we don't want to just snap it on and off so what we're going to do is find this wrist control I'm just going to hit control G to group it press insert and I'm going to vert snap it to the first elbow joint and make sure it's so we don't see, see here we're selecting this joint it says JTBN and it's a ribbon joint we don't want the ribbon joint so make sure we're snapping it to the elbow joint so we can see a, a JTDRV left elbow so make sure it's the elbow joint because if you remember the elbow joint's got the same pivot point or the same position as the forearm FK control which is what we want do the same on the other side because we'll work on these um, at the same time control G insert and vert snap it to that that joint there and just select it just to double check it's the right one ok with those groups I'll come press insert to come out of pivot point mode again it's going to expand those two groups and we'll copy the names across so rename these groups to the wrist group wrist and off for offset Okay, and now I'm going to reselect these two wrist controls and just go edit, add, add attribute, chest follow. Actually, we'll call this body follow because this is the upper body. So, with these two controls selected, just go to body or follow, body. A minimum of 0, maximum of 1, default of 0. Click add. Okay. And now I'll bring up the hypershade again. I'm just going to go graph, clear graph to clear clear everything up. And I'm going to select the two wrist controls and the two groups that they're in. And just go to graph, add selected to graph. I'll rearrange these to match the viewport. So we've got the wrist groups and the attributes of these are going to be driving it so they're near the top. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is because we are using the group from this position we don't want to add a constraint in there because we can't switch the constraint on and off smoothly what we actually want to do is then create the tie control so make sure we're in linear I'm just going to snap tie control, I'll just hide the happy shade for the minute and I'll just centre the pivot on that 
and we'll hold in down V, I'm just going to vert snap it to this first elbow joint here, hit Control D do the same on the other side, vert snap it to that, that elbow control ok so I'm going to select both these in the hypershade I mean the outliner because they're at the bottom freeze transformations, delete the history and just rename these so this is going to be tie and it's got left, it's got arm it's got um, follow body or body follow and that's the right and select them both, go to graph I select to graph to get them in there I'm going to switch over to the FK controls now, so selecting the IKFK switch, dragging it to 1. And what we want is we want them to follow along with the these FK controls. So we're not actually getting it to follow the chest, even though it's called the chest follow. Because what happens is if we get to follow these FK controls, these FK controls are always set to follow the chest. So that way if it follows the FK controls, it's going to follow the chest anyway but by getting it to follow the FK controls means later on when we start rotating these instead of following the chest fully it's just going to follow along with this FK control which is what we want when we're using the FK for animation but when the IK is concerned it will be following the body so what we'll do is select the uh, forearm FK control shift select the tie go to constraints parent do the same on the other side, the forearm control, shift select the tie, constraint, parent. So essentially what we're doing is because we can't have a smooth blend with the parent constraint, what we're actually doing is just creating a tie control that is always parent constraint to the forearm and then we're blending between following that forearm, following that um, tie control or following nothing. So it's essentially blending between following nothing and following something that is constrained. Ok, so to keep a clean, clean house, I'm just going to get these two controls and go to extra nodes, extra to hide. And remember we had that um, group for the tie controls. So group, tie, global, offset, middle mouse click, drag it into that group. Okay, so now we'll move back to the hypershade. So we've got the two tie controls at the top, and I'm just going to add some blend colors again. So two for the left, and well, two for the right, and two for the left. And we'll rename these as we go along. So it's going to be BC, oops, uh, BC underscore, and this is the right hand side, remember, so right underscore. Um, and this is the uh, body follow and remember this is the body follow translate so I'll put trans 01 copy the name paste it in the next one which is instead of trans it's the rotate so rot for rotate and then paste the names over here to the left and again the left rotate ok so we're going to take the wrist controls minimize click drop onto these and we're taking the follow attribute to the blender so this is going to be the sort of the on off switch again the blender same with the side I'm just going to select it reload left select the blend color reload right take the follow into the blender reload right into the blender again. With this still up here what I'm going to do is uh, take the tie control, reload left, take the blend color, reload right and take the translate and put it into the color one. So you can use the connection editor, you can manually you know, click on these and drag and drop connections whichever you find the quickest. So I'll select the next blend color, reload right, we're taking the rotate to color one. Do the same with the opposite side, reload left, reload right, take the translate color one, take 
rotate, then I rotate blank all reload right, take the rotate to colour one. Okay. So basically we've just got the same setup that we've had for the antennas and the rest of the follow controls. And then we'll just take these. So actually before I take these I'm gonna select them all, set the colour two to zero because by default it's it's got like a one in there because the blank colours has that one there for the blue. So I'm just gonna reset them to zero and then what can I see is just drag and drop these on because rotate and translate are there by default because they're used quite a lot so I'm just put the first one into the translate second one into the rotate and what I'm doing here is whenever you set up some of these connections you always want to check if there's a warning down here that says like cycle error or something like that or looping error because we're setting up these controls to sort of so the, the arms moving the IK, the IK is moving the joints you know the FK controls are moving the joints, the chests moving the FK, you've got all these systems working in and out of each other so you want to make sure anytime you make these connections make sure there's not a loop or a cycle error coming up here because that means you've got a loop going on and you know something's going to start flipping out if you move these controls about so just always double check that as we make these connections that nothing, we're getting no errors popping up Okay, so that's looking good. So now we'll set the. So now what we can actually do is if we just expand this. We can see rotating the arm, staying behind. Put the follow body on, and we can see it's now following along with the FK controls. So as we rotate these about you know we can see it's following along set that back to normal and take the IKFK set the uh, IKFK blend to zero again with the set these two wrists put the follow body back on now we can see as we rotate this the two IK controls are going to follow along so essentially they're not really following the body, they're following the FK controls but because the FK controls always follow the body that means they're going to follow along so that's okay for us one thing you might want to just be cautious of is if we set, switch this to FK rotate this down here somewhere switch it back to IK you can see here that putting the follow on and off can see we're actually following the FK controls so just be mindful that if the FK is bent the default pose for this you can see we've got zeros in here we can't move this back to the default position we just have to remember that if we want to get back to the default position we also have to reset the FK controls and the good thing about this is with the meld script that we set up earlier if you remember um, if I just move this, if you remember when we move this IK, if you can remember the FK and IK switch we did through MEL, that basically takes the rotation of these joints, resets the resets those controls to match the rotation, so we get the FK matching up straight away. So the case that if we did have the IK in the default pose, if we use the IK FK switch, it would actually reset those FK controls so using the mail script through that way is going to work out well for us ok so we'll just stop the tutorial here and we'll go into a bit more how we can set up go through the mail scripting again because we've changed some of the names of these so some of these are now DIV so we want to go through and just check that it's still working with the updated arm rigs